This is the Justice and Kindness Daily Scripture Reading for July 6th, New American Standard Version. Go to glow.fm forward slash justice and kindness to support this effort. Joshua chapter 8 Now the Lord said to Joshua, Do not fear or be dismayed. Take all the people of war with you and arise. Go up to Ai. See, I have given into your hand the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. You shall do to Ai and its king just as you did to Jericho and its king. You shall take only its spoil and its cattle as plunder for yourselves. Set an ambush for the city behind it. So Joshua arose with all the people of war to go up to Ai. And Joshua chose 30,000 men, valiant warriors, and sent them out at night. He commanded them, saying, See, you are going to ambush the city from behind it. Do not go very far from the city, but all of you be ready. Then I and all the people who are with me will approach the city. And when they come out to meet us, as at the first, we will flee before them. They will come out after us until we have drawn them away from the city. For they will say, They are fleeing before us as at the first. So we will flee before them, and you shall rise from your ambush and take possession of the city, for the Lord your God will deliver it into your hand. Then it will be, when you have seized the city, that you shall set the city on fire. You shall do it according to the word of the Lord. See, I have commanded you. So Joshua sent them away, and they went to the place of ambush and remained between Bethel and Ai, in the west side of Ai. But Joshua spent that night among the people. Now Joshua rose early in the morning and mustered the people, and he went up with the elders of Israel before the people to Ai. Then all the people of war who were with him went up and drew near and arrived in front of the city and camped on the north side of Ai. Now there was a valley between him and Ai, and he took about 5,000 men and set them in ambush between Bethel and Ai in the west side of the city. So they stationed the people, all the army that was on the north side of the city, and its rear guard on the west side of the city. And Joshua spent that night in the midst of the valley. It came about when the king of Ai saw it, that the men of the city hurried and rose up early, and went out to meet Israel in battle, he and all his people, at the appointed place before the desert plain. But he did not know that there was an ambush against him behind the city. Joshua and all Israel pretended to be beaten before them and fled by the way of the wilderness. And all the people who were in the city were called together to pursue them, and they pursued Joshua and were drawn away from the city. So not a man was left in Ai or Bethel who had not gone out after Israel, and they left the city unguarded and pursued Israel. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Stretch out the javelin that is in your hand toward Ai, for I will give it into your hand. So Joshua stretched out the javelin that was in his hand toward the city. The men in ambush rose quickly from their place, and when he had stretched out his hand, they ran and entered the city and captured it, and then quickly set the city on fire. When the men of Ai turned back and looked, behold, the smoke of the city ascended to the sky, and they had no place to flee this way or that. For the people who had been fleeing to the wilderness turned against the pursuers. When Joshua and all Israel saw that the men in ambush had captured the city, and that the smoke of the city ascended, they turned back and slew the men of Ai. The others came out from the city to encounter them, so that they were trapped in the midst of Israel, some on this side and some on that, and they slew them until no one was left of those who survived or escaped. But they took alive the king of Ai and brought him to Joshua. Now when Israel had finished killing all the inhabitants of Ai in the field in the wilderness where they pursued them, and all of them were fallen by the edge of the sword until they were destroyed, then all Israel returned to Ai and struck it with the edge of the sword. All who fell that day, both men and women, were twelve thousand, all the people of Ai. For Joshua did not withdraw his hand with which he had stretched out the javelin until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. Israel took only the cattle and the spoil of that city as plunder for themselves, according to the word of the Lord, which he had commanded Joshua. So Joshua burned Ai and made it a heap forever. 
a desolation until this day. He hanged the king of Ai on a tree until evening. And at sunset, Joshua gave command, and they took his body down from the tree and threw it at the entrance of the city gate and raised it over it a great heap of stones that stands to this day. Then Joshua built an altar to the Lord, the God of Israel, in Mount Ebal, just as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded the sons of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of uncut stones on which no man had wielded an iron tool, and they offered burnt offerings on it to the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. He wrote there on the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he had written in the presence of the sons of Israel. All Israel with the, their elders and officers and their judges were standing on both sides of the ark before the Levitical priests who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord, the stranger as well as the native. Half of them stood in front of Mount Gerizim and half of them in front of Mount Ebal, just as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had given command at first to bless the people of Israel. Then afterward, he read all the words of the law, the blessing and the curse, according to all that is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses had commanded, which Joshua did not read before all the assembly of Israel with the women and the little ones and the strangers who were living among them. Psalm 139 For the Choir Director, a Psalm of David O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You understand my thought from afar. You scrutinize my path and my lying down and are intimately acquainted with all my ways. Even before there is a word on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all. You have enclosed me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high. I cannot attain to it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If, my, if I make my bed in shield, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn, if I dwell in the remotest part of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand will lay hold of me. If I say, surely the darkness will overwhelm me, and the light around me will be night, even the darkness is not dark to you, and the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are alike to you, for you formed my inward parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the depths of the earth, your eyes have seen my unformed substance. And in your book were all written the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was not one of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I should count them, they would outnumber the sand. When I awake... I am still with you. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, men of bloodshed. For they speak against you wickedly, and your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with the utmost hatred. They have become my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there be any hurtful way in me, and lead me in the everlasting way. Jeremiah chapter 2 Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and proclaim in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, I remember concerning you the devotion of your youth, the love of your betrothals, you are following after me in the wilderness through a land not sown. Israel was holy to the Lord, the first of his harvest. All who ate of it became guilty. Evil came upon them, declares the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, What injustice did your fathers find in me, that they went far from me and walked after emptiness and became empty? 
They did not say, Where is the Lord who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and pits, through a land of drought and deep darkness, through a land that no one crossed and where no man dwelt. I brought you into the fruitful land to eat its fruit and its good things, but you came and defiled my land, and my inheritance you made an abomination. The priests did not say, Where is the Lord? And those who handle the law did not know me. The rulers also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal, and walked after things that did not profit. Therefore I will yet contend with you, declares the Lord, and with your sons' sons I will contend. For cross to the coastlands of Kittim and see, and send to Kedar, and observe closely, and see if there has been such a thing as this. Has a nation changed gods when they were not gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this, and shudder, be very desolate, declares the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, to hew for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns, that cannot hold water. Is Israel a slave, or is he a home-born servant? Why has he become a prey? The young lions have roared at him. They have roared loudly, and they have made his land a waste. His cities have been destroyed without inhabitant. Also the men of Memphis and Taphanes have shaved the crown of your head. Have you not done this to yourself by your forsaking the Lord your God? when he led you in the way? But now, what are you doing on the road to Egypt to drink the waters of the Nile? Or what are you doing on the road to Assyria to drink the waters of the Euphrates? Your own wickedness will correct you, and your apostasies will reprove you. Know therefore and see that it is evil and bitter for you to forsake the Lord your God, and the dread of me is not in you, declares the Lord God of hosts. For long ago I broke your yoke and tore off your bonds, but you said, I will not serve. For on every high hill and under every green tree you have lain down as a harlot. Yet I planted you a choice vine, a completely faithful seed. How then have you turned yourself before me into the degenerate shoots of a foreign vine? Although you wash yourself with lye and use much soap, the stain of your iniquity is before me, declares the Lord. How can you say, I am not defiled? I have not gone after the bales. Look at your way in the valley. Know what you have done. You are a swift young camel, entangling her ways, a wild donkey accustomed to the wilderness that sniffs the wind in her passion. In the time of her heat, who can turn her away? All who seek her will not become weary. In her mouth they will find her. Keep your feet from being unshod and your throat from thirst. But you said, it is hopeless. No, for I have loved strangers and after them I will walk. As the thief is shamed when he is discovered, so the house of Israel is shamed. They, their kings, their princes, and their priests, and their prophets who say, to a tree you are my father, and to a stone you gave me birth. For they have turned their back to me, and not their face. But in the time of their trouble they will say, Arise and save us. But where are your gods which you made for yourself? Let them arise if they can save you in the time of your trouble. For according to the number of your cities are your gods, O Judah. Why do you contend with me? You have all transgressed against me, declares the Lord. In vain I have struck your sons. They accepted no chastening. Your sword has devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. O generation, heed the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness to Israel or a land of thick darkness? Why do my people say we are free to roam? We will no longer come to you. Can a virgin forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. How well you prepare your way to seek love. Therefore, even the wicked women you have taught your ways. Also, on your skirts is found the lifeblood of the innocent poor. 
you did not find them breaking in. But in spite of all these things, yet you said, I am innocent. Surely his anger is turned away from me. Behold, I will enter into judgment with you because you say I have not sinned. Why do you go around so much changing your way? Also, you will be put to shame by Egypt as you were put to shame by Assyria. From this place also you will go out with your hands on your head. For the Lord has rejected those in whom you trust, and you will not prosper with them. Matthew chapter 16 The Pharisees and Sadducees came up and testing Jesus, they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. But he replied to them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, there will be a storm today, for the sky is red and threatening. Do you know how to discern the appearance of the sky, but cannot discern the signs of the times? An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and a sign will not be given it except the sign of Jonah. And he left them and went away. And the disciples came to the other side of the sea, but they had forgotten to bring any bread. And Jesus said to them, Watch out and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They began to discuss this among themselves, saying, He said that because we did not bring any bread. But Jesus, aware of this, said, You men of little faith, why do you discuss among yourselves that you have no bread? Do you not yet understand or remember the five loaves of the five thousand and how many baskets full you picked up? Or seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many large baskets full you picked up? How is it that you do not understand that I did not speak to you concerning bread, but beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees? Then they understood that he did not say to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he was asking his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, and others Elijah, but still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. Then he warned the disciples that they should tell no one that he was the Christ. From that time Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed and be raised up on the third day. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are not setting your mind on God's interests, but man's. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and will then repay every man according to his deeds. Truly I say to you, there are some of those who are standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Justice and Kindness Daily Reading and Daily Devotional are a service to all those who seek to know God more fully and to have their mind renewed for Christ's sake. To help us continue this effort, please like and subscribe. And please consider a one-time or monthly gift. Go to glow.fm forward slash justice and kindness to support this effort. That's glow.fm forward slash justice and kindness, all one word.